it's uh, I figured I thought of some other topics I'd like to talk about. One is, uh, you know, the men and women are <clears throat> equal partners. Always have been, always will be. You know, uh, the the man is the head of the family, and uh, but uh, he's not superior to the wife. You know, his wife, men and you know, because women are just as important to the family. They do a lot of the work is done by the women. You know, or you know, they're and you know, even at work, uh, the women and where I work, they. they some of them are more protective than the men, you know, so, you know, and they are, women are smaller and less, you know, there is just, is a difference physically, there's definitely a difference between men and women, you know, physically, you know, women are smaller in general, and of course they bear, they, they bear the children, and, you know, so there's a, the male and female gender, there's definitely a difference between the male and the females. But, uh, you know, the, you know, it's, it's the same, the whole thing with this, it's just exactly the same as it's the content of your character, not the, not your gender is not what's important. It's the content of your character. And that's something that everybody needs to be taught. I mean, that's just one of the laws of nature, just like the speed of light, and, you know. And it needs to be taught in school, and it needs to be, you know, not, a, you know, understanding that is just kind of primitive. It's like this uncivilized barbarians don't know that men and women are equal, you know, and uh, part of what, you know, a holistic human beings all know that, human, that men and women are equal. The men are, are equal partners. You know, we we complement each other. We're not the same. We're not, you know, we're but we're, we're the yin and the yang of human nature is male and female, and um, that it, it's 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 a part of biology. It's even you know, not just humans, but all biology is, you know, or at least ninety five or ninety nine percent of biology is you know, males and females. There's some microscopic life forms that are, don't have male and female, you know, but for the most part, all, all life on earth anyway has has males and females. And, um, but I just wanted to say, you know, a little bit about how important that concept is. And anybody thinking anything else other, preaching anything else other than that is lying. You know, because that's the way God made us, you know, and he's made it pretty clear that men and women are equal, you know. Uh, there's a, you know, another thing is the whole racial harmony issue, you know, because there's no, you know, races are, they're different, you know. They, the main difference, you know, saying that there's no such thing as race is just not accurate, you know, because there's human beings that evolved in China and Eastern Asia and they're very distinctive and you can see with your own eyes that they're, they look different than humans that evolved in India or humans that evolved in Europe or where, or Africa, you know, they, each one has distinctive features, you know, and we're all related, you know, I'm not saying where there's a huge biological difference. It's a biological difference, you know, the racial, you know, stereo, what do you call it? Not stereotypes, but uh, phenotypes, you know, where you have distinctive features, you know, each race of people, but they're all equal. It's the same thing. It's the content of your character, not the color of your skin. You know, and another thing about that is, is uh, in the past, these ra races of people were isolated geographically, not completely isolated, but they were separate. You know, one, you know, people who grew up in India looked different than the people in China, and they looked different from the Europeans, and they looked different than the Africans, and all that. And it's just part of human nature. But uh, 
And now civilization has become global where we're, everybody's mixed together. And so that's a new, that is actually a kind of a new phenomenon is having this one global civilization where we're all in constant contact with each other, you know, and, and so we're all growing together. A lot of the conflict and contention is a result of civilization growing together. All these different civilizations are growing together and, and that's, you know, and each one has its own laws, you know, you know, the people in China, they got a different perspective of what's right and wrong than the people in Europe and Africa and everywhere else and all this. You know, each one has its own social values and family values and what the difference between right and wrong and all that. And so that's creating a lot of tension because back in the in the past they were all isolated ge geographically and now they're all global and so those these different you know values systems are, are clashing you know and so we got to get through that um there's kind of a new ethos growing up now which is you know it's just the global ethos and it's causing a lot of tension. You know, my, a lot of my friends, I, I, I'm a very, really, I like the United States. I'm an American patriot. I believe in the whole, the founding fathers, the philosophy of the people who created the United States. I agree with that philosophy. And um, so I'm a big patriot. I'm an American patriot. I always have been in my whole life. I've been a big patriot of the American civilization but I'm also a patriot of the world civilization I like the world civilization I respect that other countries are going to have different attitudes about things and I can it's that's okay I don't I have a problem with that you know the only thing I the, the main thing I have any problem with is bullies and I don't care whether they're street criminals or politicians or business people or whatever excuse, you know, context there is, you know, it's bullies or we cannot be, it's not acceptable. You know, you can't, we need to stop, you know, and we need to confront it in every time, every time. It needs to be confronted every time. If bullies, somebody starts trying to, think they're better than everybody else and ought to be telling it, whether it's the doctors, you know, now the doctors are like going on, they're, they like lost their mind, thinking that they have a right to order people to stay in their homes and wear masks and all this kind of stuff. That's not okay. You know, I mean, yeah, we need to have governance, but it's, they don't be, t you know, no, I don't agree that people, the doctors and, or governments or any, anybody else ought to be able to order everybody to stay home. That's just not acceptable. And we need to do something and pass whatever laws we need to do to protect ourselves from the doctors. I went to school to be a drug rehab counselor at a, at a state university. And they were teaching me that my, my education, I, I would not be able to be friends with the people I was, my patients, because of my the power differential that my education gave me, that I had power over my patients. And I'm going, I got out of there. I said, I don't want to learn what you guys are teaching. I, there's no such thing as an inferior or superior human being. You know, every human being is important. Everybody wants to be important. And everybody is important. And nobody is more or less important than anybody else. That's the universal law. That's the true facts of human nature. And uh, every crime every war, every, you know, corruption, all corruption is caused by people thinking that they're more or less important than anybody else. And we need to be teaching that and everybody in every school needs to be teaching people that everybody is important and no one is more or less important than anyone else. And that it needs to be taught, you know, not necessarily aggressively, but definitely, you know, definitely, you know, and, and all constantly, you know, from the whole time 
you know, this whole idea about I, I do think that going to school and having the kids go get away from the home and go to school to, and all the kids are together, I think that's probably best. Even though the, the technology is now available for you to like hire, you know, you buy the educational curriculum and it comes into your house and you can set up your little school room, kind of like a holodeck maybe even, you know where you, the kids would go in that school and they'd be just in total immersion into the learning experience. You know, that's a pretty interesting technology. And the parents would be in charge of that, you know, and and they could do it, you know. And so that's one idea. But the only thing is, though, is going to school is actually a good way for people to socialize and meet all different kinds of people and work through school together. So I'm kind of, you know, both of the systems have good ideas, and maybe you, uh, they'll have some sort of combination of the two. But um, get the, you know, the teaching people, teaching all of us, and you know, and, and uh, about the equality of men and women, racials, you know, all the different races of people are all equal. They're all precious, valuable human beings, and you know you should be treating everyone with you know politely. You know, be kind, friendly, and polite, and uh, that's part of holistic human nature and holistic human being is being, you know, respecting every human being. You know, Ubuntu is a neat little concept. You know, the African. You know, I like to use Ubuntu. Linux software, and, and I learned about that's you know the word Ubuntu comes from the it's an African word that means friendship, and it's about you know te treating every person you meet friendly you know be friendly with every person you meet, and also the friendship of all mankind, and uh, you know that's uh, you know individually and collectively you know. And so, and that's a good attitude. Ubuntu is a good attitude, and I would, you know, per, you know, recommend, highly recommend that attitude, that culture, and uh, you know, and you know, living in these cities. How do we make Seattle sustainable? You know, in any other big city, Seattle, big cities are new. This is a brand new phenomenon. Is living in these big cities with millions of people in them. You know that. And, adapting to that and how do we make that sustainable how can we create a society where the people that live in the city can thrive and and you know improve themselves and develop themselves into you know how what, what are we going to do how are we going to do that we're going to be capitalists or communists or probably something totally different you know unlike anything that's ever existed before this is what's coming up and it's just going to gradually evolve in this new global civilization. The United Nations is this great federation of self-governing nations. It's evolving, and uh, it'll keep doing that. And the space where we're about ready to make the jump to light speed, where we figure out how to jump from this solar system to another one. There's no planets in this solar system where people can move to. The, the cr critical factor is the gravity. The only other planet in this solar system with 1G is Venus, and it's like 800 degrees Fahrenheit there. So I, we're, I don't think we're going to be terraforming Venus. You know, Mars. You know, it's, it's, it's you know it's like you know not even close to. The, I think it's one third the size of Earth. You know, so we got we got to learn how to live on Earth together. You know, and. Uh, and, and the one way to do that is first understand men and women are equal partners and every human being is precious and noble and we need to t treat each other with loving kindness and respect. And uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.